Hi there, welcome back. Today we're out at Mount Erie and we're gonna start taking a look at placing trad protection. So the first thing we're gonna to need to talk about are cams. We're gonna first talk about cams and then in a later video we'll also talk about nuts. We're gonna start out looking at the parts of a cam. So this particular cam is a number two Camelot. The number two is a black diamond size. It doesn't correspond to anything in particular. It's not the size in centimeters. It's not the size in inches. So it's important to know what brand of cam you have and to take a look at a sizing chart to determine about what size crack that particular number of cam will fit. The number two you can find inside this triangle on the stem of the black diamond cams. And in addition, this could be called a number two cam or it could be called a gold or a yellow cam for obvious reasons here. So the parts of this cam, obviously we have a carabiner at the very end. The type of carabiner you use depends on the type of climbing that you're going to do. So wire gate carabiners are really great for alpine climbing where you might have snow and ice around because they're less likely to freeze shut. And a larger volume carabiner or of a carabiner that has a larger basket, which is this side, is nice if you're gonna be working with multiple ropes at the same time. So clipping two ropes through that gate is much easier. However, a smaller carabiner may be lighter weight. So if you only have one rope that you'll be working with, that might be a consideration if you're trying to cut weight on a long alpine route. So carabiner, now we have the sling this particular sling is made out of Dyneema, which tends to wear out a little bit faster than slings that are made out of nylon. So this is the sling. You'll notice black diamond slings will be doubled around the thumb loop here in this portion of the stem. And it's important that you don't manufacture your own webbing material to use in place of this sling, because there's a possibility that this could, thumb loop could compress and actually chop the sling that hadn't been manufactured for that particular purpose. So, so cams are made a specific way and they've undergone load testing and it's important that you don't alter any components of that cam. The next portion of this black diamond cam has a thumb loop. Not all cams will have a thumb loop. Thumb loops are really handy in the event that you're aid climbing and you'd like to clip a little shorter Aid climbing is a type of climbing where you are using small ladders and if I clip a ladder here versus clipping a ladder here, this will get me three inches higher clipping into that thumb loop. So that's very nice. It can also be nice in uh, alpine climbing where you might want to have these cams clipped up higher on your harness so they don't dangle down as much, like so. So they're not likely to drag through bushes or loose rock. Okay, That thumb loop is a component of the stem of this cam and almost all cams that are produced today have stems that are somewhat flexible okay so you can see that bends it's designed to be able to bend or very flexible such as this other black diamond cam which is an old style of x4 okay the more flexible the stem of the cam the better the placement will be when it's loaded, it, and, uh, it helps reduce shifting of that cam. However, the more flexible the stem of the cam, sometimes the more difficult it can be to place the cam, especially if it has a heavy head like this number two, it can flop and make it harder to place with accuracy inside of a crack. So that's why Black Diamond recently came out with a Z4 to try to add some rigidity during placement and flexibility after the cam has been placed. Down here we have this T-bar, which composes the trigger of the cam. The trigger is used to retract the lobes of the cam. And cams come with four lobes or three lobes. Four lobes are oftentimes preferred because it allows three lobes to still be engaged even if one of these lobes doesn't engage very well and still offers um, a little bit better holding power. Another thing about lobes is lobes are made in different thicknesses. The thicker a lobe is, the more surface area contact it's going to have with the crack, and therefore the better holding power it tends to have. However, that will also increase its weight, so there's a trade-off there. You can also see these lobes 
have a lot of material removed. This is a black diamond ultralight cam, and that allows it to weigh a lot less, but the material that they're making out of it out of this aluminum is a little bit lighter weight and not quite as sticky as some of the heavier materials that smaller cams might be made out of from a company such as Totem, for instance, the Totem Basic. Now we have these two little, um, looks like the ends of screws here, they're rivets. That is the very end of the axle, or in this case axles of the cam. This is a dual axled cam, which means if this cam opens completely up in a crack, this is the crack, it can jam and will still offer some protection. So that's called passive protection. And on cams that offer passive protection, you will find on their tags, they are rated both passively and actively. 12 kilonewtons in passive load and 12 kilonewtons in active load or when it's actively engaged. Okay? Inside or between each of these lobes, you can see this little piece of metal that's rung around and that is the spring of the cam. Some cams, especially larger cams, tend to have external springs that are between the lobes, whereas smaller cams tend to have springs that are actually inside the lobes or the head of the cam. This is called the head. Um, and those internal springs on smaller cams sometimes can get gunked up, gunked up a little bit easier and need to be cleaned more frequently. And then the last piece here are these wires. It can be cable, it can be wire, it can be a strap of Kevlar, aramid fiber going from the trigger down to the lobes and that's called the trigger wire and that's another piece of the cam that frequently needs to be replaced other than the springs. So those are the parts of the cam.